and welcome. It is time once again for CU Immigration here on WRFU LP, Urbana, 104.5 FM. I will be your host for this evening. My name is Mr. Garza, and I am here to let you know that WRFU is an open forum for the Urbana-Champaign community. Views expressed are those of the speakers and are not intended to represent WRFU, UCIMC, Urbana Socialist Forum, or UPTV, as we like to say on the TV version of the show. And I guess I should add YouTube for the YouTube version of the show. Oh, I wonder if that covers everybody. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> so whose views are these? <laughs> what an interesting question. Well, uh, you may well ask that question, and I will give you an answer. I'm not, I am not, uh, you know, beating around the bush. I'm not trying to avoid answering that. I'll answer it straight out. These views are our own. And by our, in this instance, I mean myself, <coughs> obviously, and, uh, and or whoever's opinion is encoded, embodied in the stories that I may happen to read on the show. So I, I do not necessarily endorse everything I read. I choose things based on their relevance to topics that I, I want to talk about. But uh, the views are belong to the authors themselves. They are not my views. <coughs> so basically, we're all just avoiding taking responsibility for anything except what, what we say. We in the editorial sense. We say these things. Anyway, um, right. So you understand this? Are we, are we very clear about this? Because um, it is important that you recognize that uh, the views you're hearing are not those of any of the previously listed entities. So that when you get mad, <clears throat> you're mad at the right person, basically. And if you decide to sue, you sue the correct person, in this case myself. <clears throat> and I will warn you in advance that if you sue me, you won't get anything because I don't have anything. I'm poor. But you can sue me anyway if you'd like. Um, and it might make an interesting court case. I don't know. I think it'd be interesting to defend myself. Your Honor, I'd like to call as my next witness myself. Yeah, that would be weird. Okay, never mind. Um, anyway, uh, this, be that as it may. This is a radio show. You know it and I know it. Radio shows have been around for years now. And um, by now it should be pretty clear that uh, people are stating opinions all the time. People get a microphone, stick a microphone in anybody's face and you'll start getting an opinion. Or you'll get somebody trying very hard not to say anything like, no, no, I'm sorry, I've got nothing to say. Don't, don't ask me anything. <clears throat> Depends on the person. But those of us who have opinions and are not shy about sharing them, uh, put a microphone in our face, and we will offer opinions. And they are our opinions, our exclusively. They're not anybody else's. So just, you know, you know that, I know that. Uh, FCC demands that I say it to you, and we discuss it a little bit so that you understand it. Um, WRFU really, really wants you to know that uh, this weird guy that they're letting use their microphone is not necessarily saying things that they agree with. They may agree with me. It is entirely possible that they do. <clears throat> and I think it's more likely that they do than that they don't. But be that as it may, um, you have to ask them. And if you're mad and you're trying to sue, then they will definitely say, hey, that's not, I didn't say that. It's not my opinion. So just so you know, <clears throat> opinions, own, no one else's. Not any of those people's, uh, you know, blame me. Right. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm just all hoarse. So um, moving on to the weather. I always like to talk about the weather because it affects things. It affects you. It affects me. It affects our attitude, the way we experience uh, the moments of our day, uh, how we feel physically, all those sorts of things. And I have to say the weather today was gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful. It had me thinking at times, though, uh, thoughts along the lines of, boy, I just didn't do enough this summer. It just kind of flew by, and now it's fall, and yeah, i got to start wearing jackets at night and uh, you know, getting ready to carve pumpkins and things like that. <coughs> it's that kind of weather. 
it really does feel like fall is on its way and summer has gone and you know but no <laughs> summer has only barely begun uh, but it sure doesn't feel like it out there but that's okay i'm glad i like it I'm enjoying it. It's really good. So my mood is um, perkier than it might be because I wasn't sitting there dying in a pool of sweat all day. <clears throat> and then, and in that sense, life is good. But <laughs> uh, if you will remember the last few shows, and I apologize, I missed last week, but I had a meeting that I could not miss from another entity which actually pays me so I was obliged to show up and uh, you know do my part to promote whatever anyway <laughs> it doesn't matter here it's completely aside from any anything we're talking about here it's it's not relevant in any way but I couldn't be here and I apologize <clears throat> but if you remember the last few shows prior to that you will recall that I've been saying for a while now that nothing much is going on in the, in the world of immigration. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? That's changed. Things are happening. Things are suddenly occurring. We've got uh, a revival, a semi-revival of the travel ban thanks to the Supreme Court and, and some very strange thinking on their part. We've got the Trump administration saying that they will continue to offer DACA, which is a big surprise. We've got the Trump administration saying that they absolutely are not going to offer DAPA, which is in direct contradiction <laughs> with the former part, uh, leading to a certain uh, kind of enormous clash there. Well, not contradiction, but it certainly it it betrays very muddled thinking on their part. Um, <clears throat> we got Sheriff Joe Arpaio having his day in court, having a day in court. Maybe not the only one. Hopefully, uh, he'll probably have some more. Yes, and uh, we've got the the administration talking about how they need to prioritize immigrant immigration related laws here in the near future, and that's not so good. So suddenly, lots is lots is lots lots of things are lots is going on. Lots of things are going on. A lot of things are going on. I apologize. My grammar is terrible. So uh, where to begin? Uh, it's hard to say. I'm not even sure where to begin. So uh, let's talk about the travel ban. So I'm going to read something to you. This came to me by way of um, a group called Upwardly Global. And I'll just read it. It's a letter. But I thought it was pretty you know, concise and it, it made the point really well. So it says, Dear Friends... Isn't that a nice, nice way to open up? In a ruling issued today, the Supreme Court of the United States reinstated part of the travel ban against citizens from six Muslim-majority countries and decided to hear the full case in the fall. The Supreme Court placed some restrictions on the Trump administration's executive order. The administration will be able to bar citizens of Iran, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, Syria, and Yemen from entering the United States for a period of 90 days and nearly all refugees from entering the U.S. for a period of 120 days. However, the ban will not apply to individuals who have already been issued a visa or those who have a, quote, bona fide relationship with a person or entity in the United States, end quote. We are working with our partners to fully understand what this means, particularly for those we serve. Here is what we know at this point. Bullet point number one. It appears that those who are coming from the six countries to live with or visit family members will be allowed to enter, as will people coming to the U.S. to work or attend school. Bullet point number two. It is not yet clear how this will apply to refugees and whether their connection to resettlement agencies will constitute a bona fide relationship. We also don't know yet how the impact of those coming through the diversity lottery who may not have friends and family here. Bullet point number three. 
The Supreme Court will hear full arguments on the legality of the ban and whether two lower courts were right to halt its implementation when it reconvenes in October. However, by that point, the 90-day period will have passed, so whether the court will need to take further action is unclear. We have followed, 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 followed this issue closely over the past month, as well as the national debate about how we appropriately vet newcomers while preserving American values of providing opportunity and safe harbor. At Upwardly Global, we have been privileged to know thousands of immigrants and refugees, many hailing from these six countries. We are proud to have assisted them on their journeys and to witness the ongoing contributions they make in their workplaces and communities. Faced with the largest refugee crisis in history, UpGlow, which is, I guess is short for Upwardly Global, committed, is committed to doing more to help the most vulnerable of those we serve. We hope that the administration will act quickly and in good faith over the next 90 and 120 days, good luck with that, to review its screening procedures in a manner that respects America's diversity and tradition of welcoming all who contribute to our collective democratic, cultural, and economic experience. We will continue to stand with immigrants and refugees regardless of their religion or country of origin. Um, so how to explain what happened here? Uh, so I'm going to see if I can find... Uh, 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 uh. Okay. Yeah, there's so many. Uh, okay. Uh, anyway, so oh, maybe this will do it. I'm what I'm looking for here. Sorry, I should have had this up and ready. Is a sort of a discussion of what the court actually said. I mean, they basically said, uh, I don't want to try to paraphrase it myself because I don't think I can do a, a really good job because it's kind of confusing. So basically, well, basically what they said was, uh, we, we will accept the case, we're willing to take a look at this, and um, and, and see what it is, but in the meantime, we'll allow it to sort of partially go ahead. Now, why did they say that? That's the, that's the sticking point. That's the thing that seems strange. Um, some people guess, some have guessed, that they approached it like this it's not a statement of support for the ban itself. It's not saying, oh, we think this is okay. It's more a statement of support for the power of the executive branch to make decisions of this sort. <clears throat> so it's like saying, well, you were elected to this position. This part of the you know, responsibility of this position is to make uh, decisions of this sort, therefore, we will defer to your right to make these decisions by um, lifting the ban, which uh, uh, li the ban, it's hard to use these words because the ban is the travel ban, lifting the, the stay, sorry. Um, <clears throat> but it's clear enough to us that this, that your ban is overly broad and um, really does not necessarily do that many things for national security so we will limit the stay strictly to the part where you can reasonably be said to be um, acting on behalf of national security which is strangers coming to our shore just people who are saying you know what I'm going to the US I don't know anybody there I don't have anything there but that's where I'm going um, are in doubt, are, are potentially in doubt, or are people that you might say, whoa, whoa, we don't know you, we don't know why you're coming here, so maybe you shouldn't. So it seems to me, anyway, and to, uh, and, and I'm making this sort of, this is my own assumption, and also taken from bits and pieces that I've read 
other people saying about this. So I, I can't really like credit it to anyone or take full credit for it myself. But this is kind of my idea based on, on some of the things I've read and, and my own observations. <clears throat> so it seems to me that that's kind of what they're saying. They're saying, um, we want to take a look at this stay that was put on in these, these two stays, I guess, that are put on here. <clears throat> for various reasons and and one uh, that sort of an interesting supposition on that is that over the last you know 10 years or so um, groups and have been kind of judge shopping to try to find a judge with enough power who will place some overly broad stay on something you know a, a national thing uh, <clears throat> as a kind of as a way of kind of like leaping past the process of of uh, step by step you know each court going up the ladder to till you finally ended up at the supreme court in terms of going up the ladder of, of uh, hierarchy of <laughs> power to s speak on these things. So they, they go down to the lowest point they can find where someone has the power to make a national um, judgment, and then they shop for the jurisdiction that will give them the one that they want. <clears throat> so this was done a lot during the Obama administration. That, that's how they put a halt to the, the DACA and the DAPA uh, thing that came around, the expanded DACA and the DAPA thing that came around and and other stuff. I think they were working on that with the Affordable Care Act. <clears throat> so it's it's kind of a way of of getting a national making a national statement or or getting things your way nationally by kind of leaping ahead of the true power and responsibility of of the uh jurisdiction in question. And so it has been suggested, and it seems reasonable to me, that the court wants to take a look at that and say, okay, you know, this has happened before. It happened with the Republicans messing with Obama, and now it's uh, Democrats messing with Trump. And we would like to reimpose a hierarchy on this. We want to put a stop to people shopping around for, for their favorite jurisdiction to get these really broad uh, stays put in place <clears throat> that just gum everything up uh, while the the system chews through it. So there's some suggestion that this is why <clears throat> or this is what they want to do. This is part of why they took this case and, and what they want to do with it. And in the meantime, the logic seems to be all right, you know, by either completely lifting the stay or leaving it in place, we're making sort of an implicit statement about this travel ban that we are not really ready to make at this point. So instead, what we'll do is defer to the executive in that the executive has power to make this kind of judgment or this kind of, of uh, enact this kind of uh, ban, I guess. <clears throat> but we're skeptical enough of it that we're going to tailor what we're going to allow and what we're not going to allow uh, based on a far more reasonable standard uh, than what uh, the administration put out in their initial and even in their follow-up travel ban. So that's that's kind of vague and, and roundabout, but hopefully you you get my point on, on where I'm going with this. I, it's troublesome that they did this. I don't think it's it takes that much uh, thinking or, or knowledge of the case or hearing of arguments or whatever to say this travel ban was bogus from day one and word one. Uh, but we have some pretty conservative folks on there. And uh, there's enough of them who, who just sort of automatically defer to conservative authorities, <laughs> uh, whether or not their activity actually justifies that. 
hate to put it that way, but that's kind of the case. It seems that uh, Clarence Thomas, anyway, is just if it's a conservative opinion, he's got it. And it doesn't matter whether it's a good one or a bad one or whether it follows the law or not. Scalia was similar to that. I think Gorsuch will probably turn out to be in cut from that same cloth of like, if a conservative says it, then it must be true or at least true enough. If a, a liberal says it, then it's doubtful or doubtful enough, you know, automatically, whether or not there's any, any real substance there. They don't listen so much to the argument. They uh, sort of defer to where the argument comes from as, the, as their starting point. And I think that's ridiculous, um, but that's kind of the way it is. So um, that's kind of where that's at. I think in all actuality, it's going to cause all sorts of problems. I can't see how this doesn't cause an enormous number of problems because you're going to get to the point. Uh, it's going to be the same thing in a smaller way, but it's the same kind of thing all over again uh, once the stay is lifted and the travel ban goes into effect, you're going to have people coming here, and then who is making the judgment whether or not someone has a, a bona fide relationship here in the U.S.? Some things will be obvious. You know, uh, grandma's coming over from the old country. Um, yeah, of course, obviously, <laughs> she hasn't. But you have students, you have scientists, you have people coming to work, you have tourists, you have uh, all sorts of people who are traveling for all sorts of different reasons. And somebody is going to be, have to be making these decisions about whether their connection is proper. So you're going to have some people uh, making good faith efforts to do that. You're going to have some people not even bothering to try to make good faith efforts. And then these cases are going to, people are going to be screaming and going, oh, wait a minute, I was unfairly kept out. I'm taking this to court. I don't see how this really helps anything or solves anything. It seems like a, a recipe for disaster. They're not even going to hear the actual case till October. By then, all the mess will have been piled up. So all they're really doing is saying, okay, let's come up with the most confusing response to this that we possibly can. We're just going to dump it out there and let, let the chip fall where the chips fall where they may. Boy, I, uh, I was going to say something different, but I, I don't think it would be appropriate on the air. Um, <clears throat> but that's basically what they're doing. They're, they are taking something that caused chaos in the, in the first place and in trying to sort of split the difference and come up with this sort of uh, six of one, half a dozen of the other sort of response to it, they are Whatever they think they're doing, they're leaving in place the most confusing aspect of it, which is basing how these people are judged on the personal judgment of whoever happens to be doing it at the moment in any even given place. And it's going to be a mess. There's no way it can't be a big mess uh, going forward. So look in the next couple of days. I think 72 hours is what I heard before it can um, start going again? I guess. Yeah, something like that. 72 hours before the, and then the stay is lifted. Look for uh, confusion. Maybe not quite the level of confusion as before because that was just a big slap in the face to everybody all at once <clears throat> and no one knew anything about it. We've had a lot of time to consider it, to think about it, to form opinions about it. So, um, there is going to be, you know, a lower level of confusion, uh, but it, there's still going to be a lot of confusion. <clears throat> and I don't see much that's good coming from it. And uh, I, th I think in this instance, um, the Supremes got it wrong. Uh, it could be. It's possible that this was the best <laughs> response they could come up to. They were so split on on their opinions about it that this was the best compromise they could come up with that uh, sort of took everything into account, in which case, you know, it's hard to blame them 
individually anyway, because they might be saying, hey, if you'd been here for the arguments on this, uh, you'd realize that how much worse it could have been if only we hadn't, you know, had this discussion. <coughs> Excuse me, I don't know, but it's a mess, and it's it's will continue to be a mess. So the mess, it, to sum it all up, <laughs> they left the mess in place, and then they just kind of took out the other parts, the easy, easier parts. Um, so if you're traveling internationally or you're traveling through an airport um, that has international travelers, look to be inconvenienced and uh, see angry, confused people um, all over the place <laughs> in, in a just short order, uh, a couple of days. <clears throat> and, and the messy travel ban will be back in in business and I wonder you know someone I wouldn't be surprised if somebody else you know slapped a stay on it I don't I have no idea what you can do once the Supremes because they lifted those stays but that doesn't say that you know this guy over here couldn't put a stay on it so I don't know <clears throat> I don't know but um, it's going to be difficult so we'll see We'll see what happens, and, and you will report on it here. You'll hear it here first. Uh, so what else is the Supreme Court doing? Well, um, this is kind of interesting. This is from Tucson.com, or Tucson, as, as my Latino friends out there call it, which uh, seems interesting, uh, entitled Supreme Court Seeks Trump Administration's View of DACA Program. Uh, you remember me mentioning that uh, Trump said Doc was okay. So um, <clears throat> here we go. So the ability of DACA recipients living in Arizona to have driver's licenses could depend on what the Trump administration thinks. In a brief order Monday, the U.S. Supreme Court asked the Department of Justice for its views on whether those in the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals program are legally present in this country. Ah, so here's the question. Uh, this is interesting. Are they, they're present here, but are they legally present here? DACA doesn't really say. It, it allows them to be here, but it doesn't say, you know, whatever. Anyway, the court gave no deadline for a response, but the order likely means that the justices won't decide on the state's bid to deny licenses until at least October, if not later. It also means that the more than 21,000 DACA recipients in Arizona who have been issued licenses following a federal appellate court order will continue to be able to drive in the interim. Good news there. The fact that the justices want to hear from the Trump administration is significant. In 2014, the Department of Justice told the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals that the state's policy of denying licenses to DACA recipients in contrary, is contrary to federal law. Assistant Attorney General Lindsey Powell told the judges that Arizona has no right to decide that some people the federal government allows to remain in this country are authorized to be here and that others are not. She said that as far as the federal government is concerned, all are equal under the law and all are entitled to the same rights and privileges, including licenses. Quote, Arizona may not substitute its judgment for the federal government's when it comes to establishing classifications of alien status. 